Hello everybody and welcome back. We're doing something a little bit different today. As you can see, we're in a different spot. We're currently at my desk and I figured we would just do a really chill video, go over some stats and talk about the mid-year. Like what happened at the beginning of the year? How was it already June? How is it already almost July at this point? I the year has flown by. This is the year that I started my booktube channel and this has just been an interesting year for reading so far. I've got a lot of things that I want to talk to you about, a lot of things that surprised me, a lot of goals for the channel moving forward and my reading moving forward. I'm not going to do the Meteor Freakout tag because I just feel like I tried it and ended up scrapping the footage because I felt like those questions were just outdated for me. They just didn't really fit my reading taste anymore. So I've come up with a couple of my own questions. I've asked some other people for some questions, and then we're just going to kind of go over goals for the rest of the year. So the first thing I want to talk about is probably what was my favorite book of the year so far. And I own it, but it's currently sitting under a pile of other books. And that was Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This one it took me by complete surprise. And I loved it. I ended up giving this one a... 9.57 on call pile, which is the rating system that I used from G from Brook Ghost. It's also where all of my statistics and spreadsheet is coming from is from G and I will link all of that down below. But a 9.57 is really dang good. A perfect 10 is a perfect five stars. And I loved this book. I thought that the banter was great. I loved that the science was part of the world building, that it wasn't just something that was thrown in there, but it was really immersive and it has one of the best supporting characters and friendships that I've seen in a long time, especially in a sci-fi book. So loved it, loved it, loved it. I will say that Rocky from Andy Weir also fits the question of what was your like favorite character of the year? What was one of the most unique characters or characters that you can remember? Rocky. Rocky was great. Um, if you don't know what Project Hail Mary is about, this is a sci-fi about a guy that has to go by himself across the universe to try to figure out why these, I think they're amoebas, these molecule things are about to eat their sun. And without the sun, the world will end. So he's got to go save the planet. The next question, I'm just kind of going through the standard ones real quick, was the most disappointing book of the year for me so far. I will say there were a couple of contenders for this one, but I think I'm going to go with There Is No Devil by Sophie Lark. This book is the sequel to There Are No Saints. There Are No Saints got five stars. I absolutely loved it. And then we came up to There Is No Devil and this one got a two star from me. I just did not have a good time with this book. I felt like a completely different author wrote it and it just, it didn't follow up on anything that the first book gave me. And I think that even though I've had some really low stars this year and other books that we could consider really disappointing because I loved this one or the first book in this one so much, for the second book to be as bad as it was, was extremely disappointing. This is a stalker serial killer romance. I don't know, the first one's not as romancy. The second one's a little too romancy. But yeah, this one, this one was just, it was not it for me. It was disappointing. And then let's talk about the most surprising book of the year so far for me. And I'm actually going to go with The Fall by Ryan Cahill. This is the prequel novella to A Blood and Fire. And I think that you're supposed to technically read this one after A Blood and Fire, even though it's the prequel novella. The series is a little bit harder to explain because I think it's going to get more intricate as it goes along, but it's very chosen one, classic fantasy, dragon companions, adventure type story. And I'm enjoying it a lot, but I really, really liked this novella. And I think the reason that why this one's going to be the most surprising for me is because if Blood and Fire was a three star, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I had a lot of problems with it, one of which was the writing style. But then this novella came in and just blew out any concerns that I had. I loved it. It also is surprising that I loved it so much because it is so short and I personally don't tend to like teeny tiny books. I feel like they don't get enough development time and explanation time, time in the world and with the characters. So for this one to have been in a four and a half star read, amazing. The next question I personally have is my favorite series. And right now I haven't really read a book or 
more books in a series this year to be able to give you like a new favorite series. Um, probably my favorite series right now would be the Stormlight Archive. I really, really enjoy the Stormlight Archive. Um, a Realm of the Elderlings is on up there. Obviously, I loved Malice last year, so Valor um, is high up on my list to read. But since I've only read the one book, I don't feel like I can consider it a favorite yet. I'm looking at my shelves trying to figure out if there's really anything else I've read more than one book from. Yeah, so I think those are going to count as like my favorite series of the year. But if we're talking series endings, I have read a really great series ending, and that is Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the third and the final book in the David Bad trilogy, and I loved it. It was a great ending to the trilogy. I had a great time with it. I am so very glad that I read this. If you have not read City of Brass yet, what are you doing? Get on that. It's great. Then let's talk about a book that I should not have read. I feel like this one's going to be pretty easy. Um, City of Dusk by Tara Sim. I should have just put this one down. I should have DNF'd it. We should have never continued it. This is... Uh, you're going to hear the rant coming sometime next week about this book, but it falls into most disappointing, book I shouldn't have read, book I should have DNF'd, all of those things. It was a one-star read for me. I did not have a good time. I really wish that when Rachel had said, just DNF it at 150 pages, I'd been like, I, but being the toxic person that I am, I was like, well, let's just see how it ends. Shouldn't have seen how it ends. We should have just let it go. We should have never continued and we should have just let it go. I think the last question that I really just kind of want to go over really quickly is the top of my TBR. What book am I dying to get to as soon as possible? I have a couple for this one. The first one is uh, The Blade of Faith by David DeGlish. Erin from Booked and Busy really, really loved this book, and I have heard good things about it, so I'm very excited to read it. I think it is a training revenge story, and I'm interested to see how David DeGlish takes a different take on that. This one is really, really high up on my TBR. I'm also dying to get to Valor, which is the second book in the Faithful and the Fallen series cannot wait. I don't know why I haven't picked this up yet. I think I'm just scared of it. I don't know why I'm scared of it. Scared of the pain, maybe. Another one is A Darkness and Light by Ryan Cahill. This is the second book in the Up Blood and Fire series. Since I loved The Exile so much, really looking forward to reading this one. I could go on and on, honestly, for books that are high up on my TBR because there's too many books and too little time and too many things I want to read. So I think that kind of covers all of the questions, the big things that people kind of want to know as far as books. So let's talk stats really quick. Again, these stats are from the spreadsheet provided by G from Book Roast. So looking at how many books I have read this year, if you take in the books not including DNFs, because I don't personally count those toward my reading goal, I've read 96 books as of filming this video, which is incredible. I don't know how I've done that, couldn't tell you, wasn't expecting it, but here we are. But including DNFs, I have read 109 books this year, which means that I have DNF'd a total of 13 books. For me, that is a lot. I don't really DNF. I did not used to. I wanted to know how it ended or I always felt like if I can, didn't continue that it was just wasted time. But I've gotten to the point where I'm like, if I continue, the continuation is wasted time. So I've been really trying to DNF more books this year. And I've been pretty successful with that. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, the month that I read the most was April. Thank you, Realmathon and Covers with Cassidy. I read 29 books that month, which is incredible. But the, book, the month that I DNF the most books was in May. And I'm not super surprised by that because if you have been on my channel for a little while, you know that month was a rough, May was a rough month for me. We went on vacation and I just, we lost a family pet and vacation didn't go as planned. So May was just rough. Things weren't holding my attention. It was a lot easier for me to DNF something. Some of those I may go back to, but I put down five books in the month of May. Um, as far as total page count, obviously April was the month that I read the most, but even though I only read 16 books in March, its page count is like 300 pages less than April. And I don't know how that works out. I must have read some really chunky books in March. I read most of my books for readathons this year, but that one's kind of tricky because if it was a readathon and a vlog, depending on how I classified it, so I don't really keep up with that one a lot. 
Looking at my genres, I have read across eight different genres this year. Obviously, the one that I've read the most from was fantasy at 36%. I read a lot of fantasy. I actually expected that to be a lot higher, but I'll explain in a minute while I think that that's as low as it is. It may not seem like it's low, but usually I read more like 60% fantasy. So I think, I think I know why it's a little bit lower. If you're jamming mystery and thriller together, which they are technically separate on my call pile sheet, but in my brain, I count them together. And that was about 16% of my books. So I'm not super surprised by that. If you want to lump horror in with that, then that was 26% of the books that I've read this year. I've really been trying to get into more horror and mystery thrillers, so I feel like that's pretty good. I've read a lot of fantasy romance. About 15% of the books that I've read this year are fantasy romance. I think a really good chunk of that was Realmathon because I hosted the Team Bale and our subgenre was fantasy romance. So I was trying to cram in a ton of fan row in that month and that's the month that I read the most amount of books. So it's definitely skewed in that direction. Um, I've only read 9% sci-fi and I've really been trying to make an effort to read more sci-fi this year. So that number is lower than I expected, but I'm hoping to ramp it up a little bit in the latter half of the year. And then romance actually counted for 13% of my reading for the first half of the year. And I'm really surprised by that. I will say a lot of that was dark romance. Some of them, if they were more romance than fantasy romance, might have gotten lumped in there. I think a good hunk of that is um, Smutden, where I read like eight books, six or eight books, and it jacked my numbers way, way on up there. We've also had a couple of like buddy reads and things like that that were considered romance or dark romance. So I think that that's why that one's kind of high. I would expect the other numbers to really shift up in the latter half of the year and the romance number to kind of shift down. Unless we do another smut den, in which case all bets are off. For book length, the book length that I have read the most of is 350 to 450 page books. I would have actually expected this to be more like 400 to 500, but I'm not as surprised just because 350, 400, that's a pretty average page length for a book. But my third highest was 450 to 500. I did read a decent amount of 150 page books this year and a lot of that I think is readathons. I've been reading a lot of novellas and graphic novels trying to amp up that book number for readathons. So it kind of skewed my numbers just, just a teensy bit. And then something that I found interesting was book format. So I keep up with my book format because I'm just curious what books that I read the most in. Obviously, audiobook blew this out. I read about 40% of my books are audiobooks. I have a roughly 35 minute commute to work in the morning and then home. I also work in a job where I cover other providers. So if that person is out and they're two hours away, I still have to drive that two hours there and two hours home. So I read a lot of audiobooks and I'm okay with that. I love audiobooks. I think that they're a great form of consuming stories. And so I'm not overly surprised by that. The second one is ebook. I read about 25% of my books on ebook. Again, sometimes I'll read while I'm at work. A lot of times I like to be able to read my Kindle in the bath or in bed and just be able to kind of carry it around with me. So not super surprised by that one. And then I read about 13% of my books physically, but I always like to own a physical copy of books that I enjoy. So I have a pretty extensive library, even if I didn't read the book physically. And then looking at star rating, not counting half stars because I do give half stars, but they're more of like a higher, lower feeling kind of thing. So since Goodreads is going to count just full stars, we're going to talk full stars here. I have given a majority of books three stars. 48% of my books this year have been three star reads. If you want to know how many of that were three and a half star reads, um, it was about half and half, three and three and a half with 25% of my books being a three and a half and 22 being a three star read. So I give a lot of three stars. A lot of books this year have been meh. If I'm kind of on the fence and I'm like, eh, didn't quite reach four star, but it was still really good, I'll give it a three and a half. If I'm like, eh, I didn't love it, but I don't feel like it was bad enough to have that connotation of a two star read or two and a half star read, I'll give it a three. So it's kind of my median point. I have given 13% of books a two star, which 
if you had looked at my stats last year, I would have expected that to be like a 4%. So I've given a lot more two stars. I've been a lot more critical this year with my books. I've given 31% of my books four stars, which I feel like is pretty solid. I'm happy with a four star read. I've only given out one one star so far, and that was City of Dusk. And then I have given out seven and a half percent of my books have been five star reads. And that amounts to seven books total. So out of my 100 or 96 books that I've read this year, seven of those have been five star reads. So haven't given out a lot of five stars. I'm hoping for some more great books this year. But again, I have a five star read that is like absolutely amazing. I loved it. Even technically, this book was incredible. And then I have my enjoyment five star reads. And that's including both of those definitions. Just really quickly, because I find it interesting, I have read 90% adult books, Color Me Shocked, I'm Not Surprised, 3% middle grade and 4.5% young adult, and then a couple of new adult books. And then I read mostly backlist books. So 83% of my books have been backlist and 17% have been new releases. I've been burned by a lot of new releases this year. City of Dusk was a highly anticipated new release. So backlist books, here we come because you've been vetted and maybe you won't do me dirty. So those are all of like my stats that I thought were really interesting for the first half of the year. I always like to know what we're looking like. I was kind of surprised by how many romance reads that I had read this year, as well as some of like my page count. And then other things like backlist and audiobook didn't surprise me a bit. So I hope you found that interesting. Last but not least, let's just talk about some goals and some like where my channel, where my reading is headed for the rest of the year. Just kind of off the top of my head, I would... I started the channel about five months ago, so I would love to see continued growth. I would love to create an even more tight-knit community. The Late Night Crew has been absolutely incredible because me and Cassidy and Ryde just started sprinting together and we really enjoyed each other's company. Somebody was like, oh, you guys are the Late Night Crew because we were always sprinting later for the US and late for the UK crowd. And then we created a discord just so that we could share dog pics and things like that. And now we have over 500 people in that discord and it's been incredible. The community, we are so very grateful, or at least I am so very, very grateful and just can't wait to continue to see that grow and have my own little community as well. Um, I think as far as videos for the rest of the year, I still want to do some interesting sit down videos, but I want to try to do some different type stuff. So I really enjoyed my books I should have DNF'd video. I thought that that was a lot of fun. I'd like to do some different challenges, but I really do want to do some more long form vlogs. So I've got um, one coming out or coming up soon-ish that is going to be focusing on sci-fi. I've also recently done the um, reading my dad's favorite books, which was a lot of fun. So I just want to do some more stuff like that. Some long vlogs, get out all of my thoughts, ramble at you guys for a little bit. If there's something that you really love on a channel and you don't see a lot of it and you want to see more, let me know down in the comments because I'm always looking for new, fresh ideas. And as a content creator, sometimes it's kind of hard to constantly come up with something new. So let me know what you like to see and what you want to see. And then as far as reading goals go, I have read a lot of short books this year for readathons. And while I absolutely love readathons and there's several in the second half of the year I 100% plan to participate in and be competitive with if they're competitive readathons, I do miss my chunky books. So I'm going to try to focus more on the chunky books. And if there's a book that I want to read that's shorter, great. But I'm not going to just focus on those for the sake of readathons. I do want to read my, you know, Valor and my Of Darkness and Light, these really, really thick books that I've just been putting off because I felt like I didn't have time with readathons. Um, I want to obviously read more high fantasy. I was surprised by my 35% and I feel like Part of that could be why my average rating has been a three is because I just haven't been reading as many books that I would normally enjoy. I would love to find my niche with horror and read um, more horror thrillers in the latter half of the year. I think that would be a lot of fun. And I may still squeeze in some dark romance, but as a general rule, I don't plan to read as much romance toward the end of the year. I think I want to read more like horror thriller and fantasy sci-fi for the rest of the year. So... I think that covers everything that I wanted to talk about. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I find these types of videos really, really interesting to 
see that kind of reflection where everybody's at in the middle of the year where they're headed. I just think it's cool. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see video wise. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.